previously on Pace. Lily has started setting up something of a small, like, shrine to Athena. When Lily, you get a thought. A, just a kind of an intrusive thought. Then take us to the one that the intrusive thought set to go. And Jackson, look at it this way. If nobody else has had a chance to explore it, then perhaps nobody else has had a chance to pick over it. Eh? Eh? Come on. Uh, Lily and Roman, you see coming up ahead, weirdly, some some kind of structures. There's uh, small kind of ramshackle buildings. There's maybe like six or seven buildings um, on either side of this dusty main street. Howdy, travellers. What brings you to our town? Oh, well, howdy there, partner yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what are we... Sorry. What? What is this? Kindly, I'm not sure what you mean. I, Jackson's just, like, looking at, at Lily and, and uh, Roman. Guys, what the fuck is this? Like, what are we... Jackson, is he pinging your uh, uh, detector? He is pinging your life science detector, yes. And there are other signs of life in the buildings uh, throughout the rest of the town. Okay, I'm going to turn on my sight. You see, you're looking at this man, this man dressed in full black robes, who um, nothing looks too off about him except there's like a, a cloud around his head, kind of from the top half of his head up is surrounded in this seemingly some kind of thick fog. Um, yeah. Okay, how about, like, in the rest of the town that I can see? Is that all fucky or is that normal? No, it seems seems normal. Um, you just kind of look out over the town. You don't really see much else. You see kind of the signs of life that you would expect. Um, in the middle of the town, you see something strange. You see at the far side, furthest from you, of the kind of road in the town, you see a big black stain and it kind of is stained the ground in this big kind of circular, but not, you know, like roughly circular patch. Um, and the black stain kind of is smudged towards you where it tinges red and meets an equivalently large kind of big red stain in the middle of the town close on the side closest to you. You find yourselves in clear water, travellers. How can I help you? Clear water. That's, that's its name. I, is there, can I see a river? You don't see a river. Oh, interesting. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Expert on fucking being in the scouting corps or whatever. What the hell is the protocol here? What are we, what? I'm freaking out. Can I ask your name, friends? Oh, uh, yeah, my name's John. And I like put my hand out to shake it. He shakes it. John, I'm Fa- Father Turner. Pleasure to meet you. All right. This is a nice town you have here. Is this a, a recent development or... We've been here a while. Non-specific. I like it. It's a funny story. Um, wh- why don't you come in, come in, come meet the town. And he kind of, uh, he heads over to the side of, of this building that he came out of and rings, like pulls on a rope and a bell next to the door starts ringing. And you see people start coming out, um, coming outside. They kind of rush outside and then see, he, see that it's travelers and it seems fine. Uh, and then kind of uh, relax visibly. Uh, about <laughs> 10, 10 or so people come out of the um, of the various buildings and, and start kind of, uh, let's say, moseying their way on over to you guys. And like, what do these people look like? Um, okay, I guess let's describe some of them. So there's a guy that's wearing a, a thick, heavy apron and a lady walking next to him. Um, there is a woman walking with a, a boy, um, fairly young, about 15 years old. Uh, there's a man that's got a stethoscope around his neck. He's got oh, a lady walking with her. So, still um, no signs of technology? Uh, no. No, okay. no active signs. And in terms of, like, am I getting, like, a positive vibe from them or, like, a deliverance vibe? <laughs> they seem f- <laughs> relatively friendly. They're smiling and waving. Um, the, the 15-year-old boy runs up to you and kind of looks you up, up and down, Roman, and says, State your business. I, I do just want to note that, like, the father, like, turning back to the church and saying, come and meet the town, is, like, peak horror, where he just, like, opens the doors to the church, and it just, like, they're all, like, impaled on the walls. <laughs> he didn't say it like that. He did. Who says, come meet the town? He said, come and meet the town, in a very friendly <laughs> way. Sinister. How do I break to this boy that the asteroid's going to get developed <laughs> by the unknown? 
Uh, I just, That's a good question. I just say, I'm here to find out more about your town. What's your name? I'm Judd, and I'm in charge of this town. And and you see uh, the woman that is quite clearly his mother kind of hits him on the back of the head. Judd, be, be nice to the travelers. I'm Jewel. Uh, Jewel Whitaker, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What's, uh, y- you guys passing through? I mean, you could say that, I think. Is that right, Lily? Yeah. We may well be passing through. Okay, well, if there's anything I can do, let me know. Can I, can I make uh, some sort of role based on one of my key aspects? Sure. Uh, Jackson used to be an archaeologist, mm. and I just want to like suss out any any extra details I can on how old this place is, or like you know, like it, you know, if there's any anachronistic shit that I can see, or or anything like that. Yeah, let's call it wits. Okay. Oh, that's a three. Uh, not great, but let's see. Here's what you get. Um, looking around the town, you see, uh, you you kind of have ideas of, uh. I think the idea of a Western town is iconography that was pervasive enough in media that survived a bit the the unknown. Um, so you have a kind of idea of what this vibe is. It's from a, a period in history that you don't necessarily really know anything about, but you kind of see this image. Um, looking around the town, I mean, it's dusty, but the buildings don't seem uh, that out of sorts. This town definitely isn't one that has fallen into disrepair. Looking around for signs of anachronisms, you don't really see much. Um, it all seems pretty good to you. Like the, nobody's secretly wearing a, a grey link communications device <laughs> or anything. Um, the, the, the most advanced sign of technology you see is a pistol that is at uh, Father Turner's hip. Uh, that you catch a glimpse of as he's turning around as his kind of robes brush away from his uh from his body is it a six shooter it is a six shooter <laughs> yeah oh well how did their partners uh how when's the last time you guys had communications with uh other so-called villages and such and so jewel the the woman who was talking to you says well i guess i mean we don't go out that much but we get a uh, travelers through every so often we have uh, zachariah who comes in and trades goods and helps uh Helps us communicate with the outside world. We don't go out that much, but we have Zachariah who, uh, you know, brings us news of the outside world every so often. Who? Zachariah. Who's that? A, a, tr- a trader, a, a merchant who travels around from town to town. There's multiple towns? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you think we're the only town in the world? Oh, you, you got a point. Where's the next closest town? Um, I guess that would be uh, Spring Bay, but it's a solid ride. Ride. Right. Um, right. Can Lily uh, look up uh, Jewel Whitaker in her knowledge machine? Ah, do a do a, a space Google search for Jewel mm-hmm. Whitaker. Um, you don't find anything. I mean, you find. I guess it's not a super common name. You probably find one or two people who have the name, but none of them seem to be uh, anything out of the ordinary. I guess. Um, and she's also going to look at Father Turner. And say, uh, mm-hmm. Father Turner, uh, sir, would you happen to have a first name? I? Um, well, I, I don't know that it's that necessary, but Gregory. <laughs> Gregory, thank you so much. I'm assuming if you do a space Google yeah. search for Father Gregory Turner again, similarly. I mean, that's a more common name. There is a Gregory Turner who has a, a YouTube channel with a lot of subscribers, but as far as you can tell, they're not connected. Sorry, I think you mean a space tube? Space tube, sorry. <laughs> By this point, most of the town has has kind of gathered around and they're all kind of introducing themselves to you guys. Um, so I'll give you a quick rundown of the names as they introduce themselves. Oh, We've got God. Harlan May, who seems to be some kind of blacksmith. Uh, Georgia May, his wife. Uh, Jewel Whitaker, obviously, who you've met. Judd, who is her son. Um, uh, a man called Dr. Fletcher introduces himself and his wife, Nellie. Um, you see another person who, who has kind of come out to look at you but doesn't really approach uh, a guy who's kind of, um, he looks a bit disheveled and he just kind of hangs back. Um, uh, a man named Godfred introduced himself to you and his wife, uh, Charity. I'm overwhelmed by the situation. That uh, lovely looking, uh, mm, that man back there, what's uh, what's his name? Oh, and, and uh, the woman who introduced herself to you as Georgia looks over and sees him and says, Isaac, Isaac, come and meet the new people. Come on. 
Um, and he he kind of shrugs and, and just walks off uh, behind a building. That's Isaac. Don't worry about him. He's um, uh, he's a he's a nice man at heart, really. Um, howdy there. Uh, what? Howdy. Howdy. Um, <laughs> howdy. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> what? When do you next expect to see uh young Zachariah coming through to to sell or to to buy wares and sell wares and such? Um. Well, he comes through every so often, I guess. Uh, we've got the Harvest Festival in a few days. He usually comes into town just before that. Although he never sticks around. So, so a, a few days, a few days, probably. Yeah, a few days. I mean, if you guys, if you travelers want, you can uh, stay at the inn. And she kind of points to a building. Mm. Well, I mean that that'd be great. But just uh, you know, while while we're here as well, if you got stuff, you'd usually be saving for Zachariah. And maybe we could take a look at. Wow. Always be hustling, huh? And she kind of points to Jewel. Jewel usually sells like food and supplies, and sometimes um, Godfred will sell shoes that he's made and things like that. Just excess stuff that people in other towns might need in exchange. We buy things, leathers, supplies, etc. Cool. Cool. I mean, do you... no, okay, cool. Yeah, we can talk about it later then. Do you guys think it'd be weird if I asked them if they sell guns? Um, it would be a little weird. I think they seem to have one. I think you should do it anyway. No, I'll wait. We'll, I'll, I'll, we'll get to know them better. Do any of these people look kind of fucky through the site? Um, looking at them in the site, you see similar to uh, Father Turner, how he had like this cloud above his head. They all have something similar. Um, they look slightly different on each person, but more or less it's a unifying theme that about from the, the middle of their nose upwards is kind of shrouded in this light fog. You can just make out their facial features, but beneath in the in the with the site but um obscuring their eyes and above um and is that was that also true for isaac uh yes okay mm, okay yeah um should we well should we go to the inn then everyone and uh jackson's just going to start creeping back in the direction of the ship <laughs> as he says that <laughs> um uh georgia the woman who was talking to you says well <laughs> um sorry what was your name i didn't i don't think i caught it uh, you can call me, uh, Bruce. Bruce? Yep, and John and, and pointing at you, Lily. Uh, you can call me Eb. Eb? Mm-hmm. Okay, Eb and Bruce and John. Well, the end's over this way if you want. Um, Father, will you join us? And, and Father Turner shakes it. Oh, I've got, I have to prepare a sermon. Apologies. And he kind of heads back into the church. Oh, Father, would you mind if I followed in? I'm somewhat of a religious girl myself. Sure. He looks a little confused at that, but yeah, sure. Come come on in, and he kind of opens the church door, the big church door for you. So are we splitting up? Oh, God. That was my question, too. <laughs> why, why have I done this? All right, cool. Well, uh, Father Turner brings you into the church. Uh, <laughs> he calls you Eb. Um so, Eb, um, you know, I, I'm the father for the town, so there isn't that much to do. Services every so often and, God forbid, uh, uh, you know, funeral rites and, and such. Um, but mostly just preparing sermons and checking in on the town. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I like to just make sure everything runs smoothly. Of course, of course. So do you, you said you're, you're, you, you're religious yourself. Are you, are you a member of the clergy in your town? Uh, not so much. I'm just. I I think that uh, that religion to me is a lot more important than to a lot of the people around me. I appreciate that. I think it's something that can be a guiding principle in uncertain times. I certainly agree. Um, is there anything you're trying to ascertain from your conversation with Father Turner? I am just like five thousand percent suspicious about everything that's happening here. So I, like, <laughs> old mates are like, oh, I'm just going to go back to be alone inside the creepy church of creepiness, and I'm like, hmm. Um, well, he shuffle he shuffles over to uh, so there's like some pews inside and and like a a a, di- a dais a dais um and he's got a small room off to the side uh where he's got like a desk and some papers and stuff and he kind of uh, shows you the sermon that he's working on for this Sunday he says since there is sometimes not much to do around this town I like to think of the sermons as a way for everybody to come together and really have a community unifying 
you know, activity that we can all partake in together. So I wish I could get Isaac to come, but you know how how some people can be, I'm sure. Um, so uh, yeah, I, and he just kind of is taking you through the sermon that he's prepared for Sunday. Okay, um, she's actually going to try and learn a thing or two from him in terms of like getting people to come along to sermons and stuff. <laughs> So I find often you have to make it engaging for them. You don't just want to say, come to my sermon and I'll talk about God and you can find out how you have to avoid hell and go to heaven, etc. But I try to make it engaging, tie it to the real issues and themes that the town is thinking about and experience in that week. So that's, I mean, that's what I would usually do. And it works okay, I think. Um, most people seem to like the sermons. They come up and they say thank you. And I almost always have some snacks that I've set out, which helps. Um, Helps get people inside, especially people like Judd, the youth who aren't necessarily too engaged with the heavens and the hells and stuff like that. Ah, hmm. Interesting. You wouldn't happen to keep your old sermons, uh, would you? I, I would really love to have it. He, he beams when you say this and he says, in fact, I do. I keep them all. Well, in the past few months, at least. Um, and he goes over to a drawer and takes it out and, and gives you a stack of sermons of like, you know, handwritten speeches. <laughs> um <laughs> Let's jump back to the other group who are presumably going with Georgia and a few of the other townsfolk into the inn. Mm -hmm. Um, So Georgia leads you in through the saloon doors. You know what it looks like. It's saloon doors. Um, Leads you inside (laughs) and uh, Judd goes and sits down and starts playing piano. And and Georgia goes behind the uh, bar and and says, so what can I get for for y'all? Could I have a glass of milk, please? Um... (laughs) I guess, sure. And she reaches down b- b- below the bar and, and pulls out. Um, While she's doing that, I turn to Jax and I'm like, "Did you? That guy just went to play a piano. This is. Have you ever watched Westworld? Because this is it, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Westworld. I haven't seen Westworld. Um, is that is that on Space Netflix? <laughs> It, we'll watch it on the way, trip home. I mean, okay. it's going to blow your mind <laughs> after being here. Well, it sounds like the the impact of it might have been lessened somewhat by our current situation. But... <laughs> <laughs> I've already lived it. <laughs> it's true. Um, um, it, let me, sorry, let me ask you a question. In Westworld, what what, what kind of gadgets do they have? You know, like, what are we? <laughs> what are we talking? Robot people. It doesn't really work. And for then me. I start to look like suspiciously at the people around us um, to like after. Sorry, Roman, you say robot people to Jackson and you're getting a little bit worked up by this conversation. <laughs> and you notice that um, do, uh, the man who introduced himself as Dr. Fletcher kind of overhears this and then whispers something to the woman sitting next to him. Can I notice that? Yeah. Do I notice that? Uh, I guess you can roll a wits, <laughs> but probably not. You're, you're enraptured in the tale of this strange West world <laughs> that Roman is telling you about. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how I can, I can find a gadget out. Um, okay. I actually, well, while I think no one else is listening, I I actually had a plan that I was going to try and run past Roman, but I'm just mm-hmm. going to go for it. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, no need to plan. Just do it. What, what's the <laughs> plan? What, what are you going to do? So I, well, I, I, first off, I wink at Roman. So like, I'm not just going off rogue. Like, I winked. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that tells, that tells <laughs> me. So. Yeah. Um, Did you just reread Pact or something, by the way? Like, I'm just, I'm getting no? vibes here. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, so, so you said, was it Georgia who was at the... Behind the bar, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I turned my side on so I can see the cloud. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was what the winking was meant to suggest. Uh, okay. and Very I sort of turned obvious. to Georgia. I'm like, hey, Georgia, just while it's, it's us here. R- uh, Roos, yes. What, was it Roos? I've forgotten. Was it Russell uh, I think it was Roos? Bruce. Br- oh, Bruce. Maybe there was okay. a B there? Bruce. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear the B. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, let's go with Roos. Roos, um, yeah. Hi. Uh, so just between us, like I just, I I want to swear to you, we're in space. You're on an asteroid. <laughs> cowboy shit isn't real anymore. And and I'm keeping an eye on on what this does to the fog around her head, as I say. Um, interesting. Uh, she she kind of thinks you're joking at first. I think. What <laughs> what are you what are you talking about, Bruce? Space? You've been reading too many of the uh, damn star novels. <laughs> hey man, I can't afford dime store novels and in, in the sort of you know economy we're talking about in cowboy times listen i'm swearing this to you to, to everything that can hear which is hopefully just you and and me and, and roman here we're in space 
this is weird shit happening. You don't like actually live here normally. I don't think that's fucking weird. It, it it's by definition not normal that you live here like this. Um. Okay. And so your words, you, 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 you see, there's a bit of an effect in the fog as it, as um, it, it seems to strengthen. I guess like it becomes darker in color. Um, and as as you speak to Georgia, uh, but as she kind of rebukes you and clearly thinks that you're a little bit crazy, um, it, the fog kind of thins out and returns to its normal level. Okay, I tried. Okay, well, can I get you a drink there, Roos? Or maybe just a water? Have you had enough already? <laughs> she giggles, and, and but then kind of looks over at Harlan seriously. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just a, a cup of strong milk should uh you know help me sober up a bit hopefully. are you where are you travelers from it's so strange <laughs> uh, but I, I i mean i can't i must admit i like I admire the vibe of just drink and milk and you know getting close to nature i suppose and she hands you a glass of milk and and, and tops up um Ro, uh roman's glass of milk as well yes but it's it's strong milk so it's like got strong scotch milk. poured oh, into yeah. it as well <laughs> sorry that um, sounds disgusting adult milk <laughs> Uh, so anyway, what, what brings you travelers here? Uh, and you, let's both roll wits checks now. That's going to be, it's going to be a four for me. So, uh, not Roman Jackson, you notice, uh, Dr. Fletcher and his wife definitely paying attention now. Um, as, as George asks, what brings you to town? Uh, yeah. You know, Roman, uh, what does bring us to town? Well, so Yes. What we're interested in is lately we've been trading cows. So we're looking for new livestock in the local towns to buy up for our cow farm. Cow pokes, huh? Okay. Yeah, that's why we've been trying out the milk. This is some nice milk. <laughs> now, okay, maybe we should pause to dive into the fact that <laughs> Roman is just lying out of his teeth here. <laughs> um, now, Linus, as a... Uh, as someone relatively new to the other verse, we might need to hit this beat a little stronger. Lying is something that can have very serious repercussions for you. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait, I do know this because I read. <laughs> yes. So I should not be lying. Not so aggressively, let's I mean, say. To be fair, Roman is supposed to be qu- quite new at this. So. Yes. I don't think it's an out of character choice. I just want to make sure you understand, Linus, that it is a choice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, right. okay. Well, like, Jackson will kick. Roman pretty hard under the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I like look at him, I like shrug. I mean, that's a joke. I, yeah. Right. Uh, so you're not cowpokes. And uh, Dr. Fletcher on the side goes, So what is it that you do? What brings you. What? Why are you here? I have in my history. Sorry, I tend to affect the voices of those that I'm around. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 I have in my history, you know, a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a bit of time as an explorer and uh, an archaeologist, if that's a word you're familiar with. And uh, so, you know, we're just uh, we're just here to, you know, meet people, hang out, you know, uh, figure out, you know, what what makes you you. Um, Doctor Fletcher narrows his eyes at you. Okay, let's cut the Georgia. Cover your ears. Let's cut the horse shit here for a second. And Georgia kind of gasps behind the bar. I heard you talking about some kind of robot man before. And at this, now everyone in the bar, the Judd stops on the piano, everyone pays attention to this. Do y'all have a history with robot man? Do you have a history with a robot man? Uh, can I, I mean, do like a quick check to see how many people have weapons on them? Uh, you can. Um... Uh, let's. Uh, it's not going to be a hard check, I think. You notice that the tension in this bar has really ratcheted up. Um, Dr. Fletcher is the only one who isn't actively holding a weapon, but his fists are a little clenched. Georgia has, is, like, clutching this glass bottle of milk. Um, Judd, also at the piano, doesn't have a weapon, uh, but uh, Godfred and Charity, who are off on a table to the side, you see Godfred has a pistol at his hip that he is kind of holding his hand near. Okay. I'll ask you again. Do you have a history with the robot man? Uh, I'm not particularly close to any robot man. Wow. Cubby did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know him? 
Oh, I think we might have gotten off on the wrong foot. You see, I was just <laughs> telling my friend here about a recent book I had read. Right. So, okay. I'm sorry, everyone, but this is suspicious, right? These travelers show up out of nowhere talking about the robot man. I mean, am I out of line? And and um, uh, his wife, Nellie, kind of squeezes his arm and says, no, I think it's... I think it's mighty suspicious. Oh, I mean, where are travelers supposed to come from? I don't think it's the fact that you're travelers so much, but we, we've we been having, you know, we have trouble with him, and then you show up and start talking about him. I think Wait, it's fine who's to him? suggest... <laughs> there we go. It's clicked. <laughs> um, and he, Dr. Fletcher's eyes narrow at you. You're not, you're not talking about Baxter? I swear to you, I have no idea what the fuck a Baxter is. Uh, okay, let's cut back to Lily and Father Turner for a bit, shall we? Mm-hmm. So, Lily, you've been going through Father Turner's um, sermons, and he's been kind of over your shoulder watching you and hoping that you laugh and gasp at all the right places. And every so often he'll point to a line and say, now that's one of my favorites there. That, I, that one always does well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I I think I can see why, yeah. Uh, what made you start keeping them instead of, I presume, you may have thrown them away before? Um, oh, just, I thought it's probably worthwhile, you know, keeping some history and stuff. Uh, I don't know. There's been some trouble in the town recently, and and I thought it's nice to have a record just in case anything happens. Oh, why would you think something would happen that you would need a record like this? Here, let me show you, he says, and he kind of takes you out a side door of the the church to to a little area behind the church, and there are two, uh, two graves um behind the church two very kind of uh, hastily constructed graves just made out of wood um and on one of them uh is the name Herschel Whitaker and on one of them is the name John Slaven um and he says you know we we are a close knit town and uh, it it always hurts when we lose members when we, we lose one of our own it's like losing a family member you know um and i i guess i just want to make sure that I keep histories of of people and and the sermons and everything and just all just in case you know just in case so we have something to remember them by. Okay, I, I have to very quickly know: are there literally any other graves back here, or is it just these two? It's just the two. Okay, that is yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, she's gonna like look around and say, uh, "How long is your uh, how long has your wonderful town been here? Um, you seem quite well built up." Why don't you roll a rapport check for me, Lily? Oh, fuck, I think. Yeah, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to give you a plus one as well, because you've clearly uh, endeared yourself to Father Turner. Thank fuck. Well, that's a two. A two overall? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I guess I can trust you, Eb. I I mean, we've we've been here for a while. The town's been here before I was born, I think. But, well... Kind of. It's hard to say. I. Every so often we move, I guess, or mm. kind of. I mean, the, we move, but the town stays here. I, I don't quite know how to explain it. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, you know, we, we the town's been here for a while, and there used to be more of us, but in the past three or four months, I guess, um, it's gotten rough. Uh especially more so than normal um because people have died of illness or or uh old age or whatever but this is the first time that we've had people being killed oh uh who who killed these people how horrible we don't know his name or its name i guess we call it baxter at this point we hear a clunk outside a heavy clunking footstep and then another one immediately Father Turner uh, says, oh shit. And he runs to the front of the church and starts ringing the bell as loud as he can. And everyone filters outside. And you all see, coming down the street, from the far side, away from where your ship was, a uh, probably about seven feet tall, about two meters tall, uh, mechanical man uh, with a mechanical pistol at his hand and a, a cowboy hat on his head, kind of walking towards the town. Sorry, is, is it a mechanical hat or is it just a leather hat? It's a regular hat, yes. Regular hat on his head. This is very important for the notes. Um, so everyone runs outside and you see him kind of, he walks up to the 
entrance to the town and he and he just stands there what does he look like through the site what he looks like through the site is you saw the clouds above father turner's head and the clouds are on everyone's head get a little thicker and denser including you see clouds around the head of baxter okay so that's the only weird thing about him he just has the cloud on his head I'll answer that question by contrasting to you the difference between what you see in your sight when you look at Baxter and what you see in your sight when you look at, for example, uh, Cubby and and any other like simple automaton that you you might have encountered, you know, sw- street sweepers, etc. Um, they're they're like devoid of any signs of life, right? You know what I mean? Like, looking at a human, you can see the kind of hues and the connections and the the, the 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 life that is kind of tying them to the world around them. But that is n- obviously absent in these simple automatons like street sweepers and stuff, stuff like Cubby. Mm-hmm. Looking at Baxter, you see connections coming out of him. You see he his line of sight, his focus, all of these things that you would never usually see from a simple automaton. You see the, the signs of life within Baxter. Right. Okay, cool. Okay, interesting. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Elliot. Elliot's posted a, a link to a Doctor Who episode, which is totally <laughs> ripping off my cool idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. So the town kind of rallies around and, and comes and runs over to, to where you and, and Dr. Turner are. Oh, sorry, Father Turner are, um, and including presumably uh, Roman and, and Jackson. You guys follow the town as you see this automaton. Um, and, uh, Dr. Fletcher and Father Turner start an immediate conversation about who should duel it. They're, they're like clearly arguing. Father Turner is arguing that he should be the one to do it. And Dr. Fletcher is arguing that it should be him and they need the father. And the father is saying, well, no, we need, we need you dark. We need you in case I get hit we, or to take care of the rest of us or, or anything. Um, and, uh, why didn't I have everyone roll a wits check? For me yes uh, four Oof, it's, uh, zero uh, four um i'm gonna ask lily and jackson what are you guys looking at what are you guys keeping your attention on during this time uh escape routes <laughs> okay um i think lily would be like she's keeping her sight on and like flicking it between like baxter and you know the two that are arguing and and yeah yep. kind of back and forth between them Lily, you uh, every every time you look over at Baxter, you see he's just kind of standing there silently waiting. Um, and after a short amount of time, you see him. Uh, well, actually, no, he's just he just stands there. Um, you don't see him respond or anything. He's got his hand at his hip, but he's not moving. Um, I'll get back to you in a second, uh, Jackson. You're kind of keeping your eyes between the buildings and stuff, looking for ways you could escape. And you notice. Uh, two people that are creeping around. One is Isaac, the man who refused to talk to you. He's kind of hiding behind a building, um, holding like a lead pipe, and he looks pretty terrified. Um, and you see Judd, who was on the piano, the 15-year-old, uh, also behind a building, kind of sneaking around, and he looks like he's trying to sneak up to the to where this group discussion is happening, where uh, Father Turner and Dr. Fletcher are arguing over who should be the one to, to duel Baxter. Um. Lily, as you flick your eyes back over to this argument, you see that uh, Father Turner has has won. Father Turner has said that he's the one who should do it. Um, And uh, Dr. Fletcher has has agreed that that you guys need the town. The town needs its doctor, I think. You're right, Father. I'm sorry. And Father Turner says, no, no, it's okay, child. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Uh, And he walks out into the middle of the street. um, And... Uh, there's a quick commotion. Judd, the 15-year-old, has just run up to Dr. Fletcher and grabbed his gun and is now running towards uh, Baxter. And everyone's yelling, Judd, no, Judd, no, etc. So you said Judd's 15? He is 15, yeah. Ah, uh, and I mean, information you gave me before was pretty suspect. Which information? Sorry? That he was creeping around. Yes. Yeah, I, I think Jackson's going to like, try and tackle him i don't know if i'm close enough. am i close enough to do that yeah you kind of noticed that he was poking around and you kind of in response started poking around after him i guess so you're quite close to him uh let's yeah. roll a a brawn check shall we oh my 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 one week 
Only one, really? Anyway. Apart from all of the other He's ones. only a 15-year-old boy, so he's not especially brawny either. I think you're overestimating Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, shit, that's a two. And I got a minus two, so you have effectively tackled him. Um, you tackle him, and as you do, you tackle him to the ground. The gun goes off, but you see that you quickly look around and see no one has been injured. Although Baxter responded to that, kind of looks over and... and picks his own gun up but doesn't react once he notices that it wasn't a shot fired at him um he uh yeah he uh baxter kind of goes back to his standings and waiting uh, and you tackle judd to the ground and, and jewel his mother comes over and thanks you and says judd why would you do that come on let's get out of here uh, you you shouldn't have to see this and and judd's like straining trying to pull back but but jewel overpowers him and pulls him away um and father turner kind of looks out to you guys and says okay everyone if I, if I don't make it, um, Georgia, uh, I'm going to trust you to take care of the church. And she nods. Okay. And uh, he walks up to Baxter. As, as he's like, okay, and starts walking up, Lily is just going to roll her eyes and just be like, no, that, this, that's it. I'm done with this. And like walk over to um, the area, like the open street, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, she's going to like look over at uh, Roman and then over at Jackson, who I presume is rolling in the dirt. Um, yep. And just be like, be ready to back me up here. <clears throat> okay. Um, Baxter looks at you as you approach. Uh, and you, I guess I should say one other thing about Baxter, which you didn't notice before, but now that you're closer, you do notice. Um, you thought he had a, a mouth. You see that there's like a line, but you see now clearly that it is painted on and he doesn't actually possess any like jaw joint. It's painted in a very crude a uh, smiley face that doesn't match the rest of his body at all. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so so Lily is going to, like, walk out to this um, and kind of look around and, um, like, look up for a second and give, like, a little silent, like, prayer to Athena that this goes well. And then she's going to clear her throat and say, <clears throat> by, all the, uh, by all the wisdom and grace of Athena, I declare this entire instance to be nothing more than than a, a a trickery laid upon us and this land man of metal you do not fit within this theme and i banish you from here he looks at you and is kind of still has his hand over his gun as does father turner and father turner kind of backs up your words and so do some of the townsfolk father turner says yeah we don't we don't want you here you're not welcome here and he kind of looks back to looks at father turner and then looks at the other townsfolk who are kind of yelling support sorry can jackson can jackson just ask father turner a quick question as this starts to escalate here sure hey uh father why why did somebody have to duel it what's that's, that's just what happens that's just how it's done okay so it's just you just all agreed that it's only going to be one of you that fights baxter there's I mean, no like there's no like downside to just like a group ganking him um, and again at this, the fog around his head gets much thicker and darker before he kind of shakes his head and says, no, that's, this is just how it is. This is how it's always been. Okay. Good. Good to know. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, Jackson's just going to stand up and start trying to get ready to get behind Baxter. This, this one-on-one duel thing's clearly bullshit. Um, <laughs> did I, uh, did I get you to roll a practice roll before Lily? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'll get you to do that now. As you make your declaration. Actually, let's call it theatrics. Oh, thank Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I've been waiting to get a a theatrics role rather than a practice role for a while now. I think this one definitely counts. Oh, get fucked. Oh, no. (laughs) So that's a plus one all up. Uh, Oh, wow. uh, Don't you have like four theatrics? I do have four theatrics, actually. Yes. (laughs) Bad roll. Um, I think with the townsfolk backing you up, I'll make it a plus two instead, but it's still not super strong. Um, So clearly your words have had a bit of an effect on Baxter and and on the townsfolk. Uh, Father Turner turns to you and says, that's all right, uh, Eb, I'll I'll get rid of him. Um, And you see Baxter... Uh, turns around looking at you uh, Jackson but also turning his back to Father Turner who does the same thing and they start to slowly walk away from each other one, two, I've got to start fumbling for my limit saver five, six, seven eight, 
Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Jackson. Jackson starts touching up his his lumen saber, fills him with a bit of his own bravery, and he's gonna charge back to with the lightsaber. Or the so the lumen saber. Okay. Can you roll brawl for me? Sure. Uh, and also roll dexterity for me. <laughs> uh. Okay. Sorry. On the brawl front, we are looking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Dexterity is going to be a flat two. Okay. Okay. Um, here's what happens. You charge at Baxter with your Lumen Saber drawn, um, and he kind of turns to see you as he's also turning to draw his gun on Father Turner. Uh, there's a lot of turning in this, in this moment. <laughs> um, you basically are about to slash at him with the Lumen Saber, and he, he kind of reaches up and, and blocks your... Um, your hand, your hand with one hand while he shoots at Father Turner with the other hand. Uh, you then kind of just stumble into him and crash onto him as Father Turner turns and shoots. And uh, Jackson, you feel a hot pain uh, pierce <laughs> through, your, through your arm as you kind of fall into the ground. Um, and you're going to take uh, two physicals. Uh, actually, let's call it three physical stress as you get shot in the arm. Um but you, you knock over Baxter. Baxter's shot goes completely wide and, and misses. Uh, and the townsfolk are kind of silent for a moment. And then Baxter just gets up and just, like, rushes off, out of the town again um, as you're kind of on the ground. Uh, Do- Dr. Fletcher runs over and, and says, that was, you shouldn't have done that. That was oh, incredibly stupid. But here, bring me your arm. I'll, and he kind of just starts bandaging up your arm and, and you see him and his wife. Uh, pick pick up Jackson and start carrying them into uh, into uh, one of the houses nearby, um, and the townsfolk kind of recover from the shock of of this happening, and and uh, Father Gregory <laughs> runs Father Turner sorry runs with um, runs after you going Roos I I'm so sorry I'm sorry oh you shouldn't have done that Roos and just kind of rushes off um and the rest of the townsfolk including you Lily and you Roman are just kind of standing outside a little bit shocked at how this has all gone down um I feel like Lily would want to follow the metal man Mm -hmm. uh okay so she's gonna look over at Roman and then point to like to where they're taking Jackson and then point to herself and shrug and then start following the metal man which is incredibly clear what I mean, so. I follow Lily. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> okay, so you don't do what Lily says, you just follow her instead. I, I, I was some point... trying to give him an option, like, are you going to go there or come with me? Shrug, question mark. Um, and, yeah, but Roman can. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Um, as I, like, bump past people, townspeople and stuff, do anyone have, like, open firearms that I could, like, grab off them in, like, the hob hob? Um, so the only person who you saw had a firearm, apart from Father Turner and Dr. Fletcher, uh, actually, sorry, those, those were the only people you saw had a firearm. So you don't see any, Uh, but as you're rushing off, um, uh, Charity, who was one of the people that introduced herself to you, comes up and says, don't, you shouldn't follow him. I don't, I think it's dangerous. Um, I just feel like we have to do something, you know, this surely can't be the way you live. Do you have any, yeah, you were going to (laughs) say? Oh, no, I was just going to say, if you really gonna go here take this and she hands you a lead pipe <laughs> <laughs> i don't thank- know maybe this will help thank you um when uh jackson regains consciousness tell him where we've gone okay okay uh so uh lily and roman rush off um i guess let's follow lily and roman uh jackson you're probably not super coherent right now uh, is there anything you'd like to do in response to being shot and being kind of tended to by this town uh no, I think Jackson's probably just passed out from <laughs> all of that. I I would like to say that I feel a little bad. Um, Lily probably feels slightly less bad that um, Jackson's always the one that's getting into shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Doctor Fletcher is trying, like, takes the bullet out, and you come kind of come in and out of consciousness as this is happening. And you see the first time you gain consciousness, Doctor Fletcher is taking the bullet out and. And Father Turner is like apologizing profusely and clearly a bit in shock. And Dr. Fletcher says, Greg, grab his arm, hold it down for me. God, I mean, sorry, please. Um, <laughs> and then you kind of fed out of consciousness again as forceps go into your uh, bullet wound in your arm. It's kind of in your upper arm, um, not, not too close to your shoulder, about halfway between your shoulder and your elbow, I would say. Um, 
uh, and when you slip out of consciousness and you come back into consciousness and and uh, uh, Dr. Fletcher is like bandaging up your arm and uh, you can see Father Turner is kind of uh, kneeled in a corner quickly saying a prayer and then you slip back out of consciousness again. Um, let's jump over to Lily and Roman. Roman, you catch up to Lily fairly quickly and you guys start kind of sneakily following uh, Baxter as he goes out of town. You follow him. He's walking for a while, probably for about half an hour, maybe 45 minutes um, on foot before he comes to uh, basically a tent that has been constructed in a campfire and you see him uh, just kind of clonk down in front of the fire uh, and reach over and, and uh, open, uh, take out like a small can that you can't really understand what it, what it is and you see him grab the top of the can and just rip it off and then he puts it over the fire and just kind of sits there unmoving for a while. Um, just... Yeah, Lily is going to be like, be, be prepared to... Uh bail me out i suppose um and then she's gonna like slowly like walk up to the fire and make motions as if to sit down next to him or like not next to him but like across the fire from him um he sees you and and kind of puts his hand over towards his uh gun which i should, I, don't, I don't think i pointed out is also a six shooter oh, yeah of course. um and but he sees that you're kind of indicating to sit down and he he puts his hand uh back for a second um, and and motions to invite you to sit down, and then just kind of looks at you expectantly. I mean, you can't. His his eyes don't have that much emotion. He doesn't have eyebrows or anything, <laughs> but um, he just kind of looks at you. Yeah. So as she's like coming over to sit down, she um she's like, uh, "Man of metal, I swear that I mean you no harm by coming to sit by your campfire, and I hope that you will uh, extend hospitality towards me." Um, he he turns back and kind of slowly with his hands like up ish reaches and pulls out uh, two spoons and he takes this can of what you now see as beans off of the fire and kind of puts one spoonful in and like mushes it into his mouth it, mouth <laughs> drawing I guess and just like beans run down his face and he takes another spoon and hands it to you full of beans. Uh, Lily will eat the beans and thank him. Okay, and you guys just sit there for a while eating beans. Him, and he kind of nods and smushes beans into his own face as you uh, eat beans. <laughs> um, and then he wipes his face off with like a, a, a rag that he has off to the side. Roman, you sit and watch this very strange display. Do you approach? Do you? What do you do? Um, so I think I was hesitant at first, but now that there obviously doesn't seem to be any hostility, I like come and sit down next to Lily, but I've got the lead pipe behind my back at all times. All right, you sit down uh, and you get a closer look at him and notice, you know, the same things Lily has. His mouth is drawn on, etc. It's actually gotten a bit scuffed from rubbing beans onto it and he reaches over and, and pulls out no, like a, a um, like lipstick thing <laughs> and like draws his mouth back onto his <laughs> face. Uh, but it's very short. Um, and he kind of looks at you, Lily, and at you, Roman. And does he say anything? He doesn't. Oh. Um, so Lily is going to like look at him and and ask, um, is Baxter the name that we should be using to refer to you? Uh, you can nod or shake your head if you would like. He, he nods and then he kind of twists his body and shows you on one side he's got like imprinted on him, Baxter. Okay. And he, he won't respond to me if I talk to him, is that right? He His mouth is drawn on. He cannot speak to you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but he's acknowledging. If you say words, he acknowledges them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Lily's going to just, like, start, like, questioning him and just being like, uh, so, Baxter, you've uh, been around this town for the last few months, is that correct? And he nods. Do you know where you were before? He shakes his head. Do you know why you are dueling the people of this town? He takes his hand and points to himself and then points in the direction of the town. You want to become part of the town? He pauses for a second and kind of tilts his head slightly and then nods. Okay. Have you killed any of the townsfolk? He looks down at the ground and then looks back up at you and nods. Did you mean to hurt them? He he kind of tilts his head at you. He doesn't nod or shake his head. Okay. Do you have any choice of the actions you make? He, again, tilts his head and then, as if thinking it's a strange question, <laughs> but then nods. Hmm. Will you give me your gun? He puts his hand over his weapon and then he shakes his head. Will you promise not to shoot anyone? He points at the town 
and then at his gun, then at himself, and then at his gun. Baxter, would you swear not to shoot anybody in the town if you were able to join them? He pauses for a moment and then nods. Okay. Okay. Um, By this point, the sun is starting to well and truly set and Baxter kind of stands up and motions for you to stand up as well. Mm -hmm. And he points at himself and then at the two of you and then towards the town. You want us to go back into the town with you? He shakes his head. He points at you two and then at the town. He points at himself and points at the campfire. Uh, oh, you want us to go back to the town and you just stay? Of course. Uh, he, he nods. Thank uh, you very much for your hospitality, uh, Baxter. He gives you the empty can of beans without really saying anything, obviously, but just seemingly as a souvenir of your encounter. Hell yeah, add empty can of beans to inventory. <laughs> um, and then he sits down uh, and as you guys are kind of walking away, you look back and you see him take a pose that looks very similar to... Uh, praying he looks like he is praying uh, and then he goes to sleep he takes a sleeping position and you see him his eyes kind of shut off well it takes you guys about 45 minutes to walk back to town by the time you get there uh, father turner is kind of anxiously looking uh, in the direction you went waiting for you and he sees you and, and waves you he says eb uh, eb and john thank god you're okay what happened i mean okay first um Bruce, he's fine. He's going to be fine. It's all right. I, I think it's okay. Um, but yeah, gosh, shit. Uh, no, uh, sorry. Sorry. It's been a stressful day. Of course, father, please. Shall we, uh, go into the church for a few minutes? Right. Yes. Yes. Um, and he kind of leads you guys into the church, uh, and you see in one of these side rooms, there's like a bed that is being made up and you see Jackson is, uh, there, uh, conscious again now. Still in pain, Jackson, uh, but but you see them come in. <laughs> uh, you've been talking to, ever since you woke up, uh, Nellie Fletcher, who's been who's the doctor's wife, has been kind of with you and keeping an eye on you. Um, and you've been kind of loosely chit-chatting. Oh, uh, uh, hey guys, uh, where the fuck have you been? Uh, we were out uh, finding some things out. And Father Turner says, well, do share what, what happened. Father... I would say that Baxter, I don't believe he is a, uh, he is a man of evil. I mean, okay, he's shot and killed two of our townsfolk. He, yes, he has. Uh, at the same time as those townsfolk were attempting to shoot and kill him, I would say. I suppose. I believe a lot of this may be a terrible, terrible misunderstanding. You understand why that's hard for me to accept, Eb. I mean, he's killed friends of mine. He took Judd's dad. He killed He killed John. He. I mean, it's not okay. Uh, what do you want me to do about it? I, I would like you to think about it, Father Turner. As we, we followed him, um, and he invited me to sit at his camp and eat with him, and when we left, he, he prayed uh, to... To God, I presume. Um, that thing surely doesn't... <laughs> surely, that thing doesn't pray to God. Not my God. Not not Zed Kill, right? Pot calling the kettle black over here. <laughs> um, I believe that Baxter is just as much of a living, thinking man as, as you are, uh, Father. Okay, it's late. Why don't we get some rest... And I'll talk this over with the town, with Georgia and Harlan, and we can, I don't know, we'll, we'll talk about it. Please do. And remember that, as, as is taught, that uh, one must uh, always turn both cheeks. Hmm. Um, and he, he, he kind of ushers you out before wait, pausing you for a second, Ab, and going and grabbing another sermon and says, I think this is an interesting one. He hands it to you. And you guys go and, and find uh, Georgia behind the bar in the inn, and she kind of shepherds you in and says, "Okay, welcome. Um, yeah, you can stay here for the night while stay here while oh, while uh, while Roos is recovering. I feel terrible. We'll, we'll, for free, no worries about about the the payment. You can just have the spare rooms. It's not like they get much use anyway. Oh, thank you, dear. Um, and you guys get some rest. Uh, we're gonna fast forward over the next two days in town. Um, 
you guys are still around town. Uh, Roos is recovering, and Father Turner, true to his word, kind of locks himself and Harlan and Georgia in in uh, a, a room in their house for a while, and they're discussing it. What, what did the uh, the sermon say that he gave me? Um, a lot of the sermons that you read before were from a top drawer. When he was getting this out, it was from the second drawer, ones that he had been kind of um, planning, but you see there's like a lot of crosses through it and stuff, and, and it's clear he eventually scrapped it. Uh, a lot of the stuff in this sermon is talking about specific references to, to literature, um, not obviously uh, not literature that you're especially familiar with, but biblical literature about uh, the god Zedkiel and some of the, the early, early, analogous to early uh, Old Testament stuff, right? Um, mm-hmm. And it's very, there's a lot in there about revenge, the idea of revenge being a bad one, but the idea of justice being something that's necessary and true and the god Zedkiel preaching about uh, the idea of retribution and, and justice and equality and, and a bunch of things that it kind of is clear to you. And after looking at the, at the uh, sermon for a little while longer, you, you ascertain based on the date, it seems like this was about three months ago, theoretically around the first or second time that they encountered Baxter. And it's clear that this was quite a uh, powerful emotional time for Father uh, Turner and he wrote this sermon as a response, but never ended up delivering it. Okay. Uh, Lily would like to write a sermon for him. Okay. Um, kind of using the, um, using like the ones that he wrote as like kind of a way to, to get into his like style of writing, you know? Um, and she would like to, to write one about, um, you like write, write like a, a sermon style thing about, you know, the power of forgiveness and justice being like, um, rather than punitive justice, like justice aiming for the betterment of all lives mm. um, and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you roll an artistry check for me. Oh, fuck. I really love this idea. I apologize <laughs> that I can't give you a stat that you're better at to to, uh, <laughs> to create it, but I think it's wonderful. Um, don't. I'm going to s- t- tie into the knowledge from the sermons you've got and give you a bit of a bonus as well. Let's say a plus two. Oh, thank God. Um, but you write this sermon. Tell me how effective it's going to end up being. Uh, pretty ineffective, I think, because I got a minus four. So <laughs> overall a minus two then Jesus. with your bonus of plus two. Overall minus two. Um, yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Um, we'll get back to that in a second. You've written the sermon, and to you it looks pretty good. Um, Fuck. <laughs> let's jump to Roman. So Roman, in, the, in these two days at, around town, you have found yourself helping... Uh, you found yourself helping Jewel. So you, you've kind of uh, interacted with the townsfolk a bit and you found um, one day you were, you were uh, in the center of town and you saw Jewel was pulling a cart full of like uh, uh, cabbages. <laughs> it was a cabbage cart. Uh, and she s- clearly seemed like she was struggling. Judd, her son, was just kind of off playing instead of helping her. And so you kind of run over to help her and you guys started to talk. And she thanks you and says, thank you. Thank you, uh, John. It's always It's always difficult to you know, get everything ready for the Harvest Festival, um, especially without, uh, I mean, Judd's not that much help. Oh, you know, I think it's just an age thing. Yeah, I'm sure it's a, a trying age. <laughs> um, <sighs> could you tell me more about this festival? I uh, Sure, I can. Um, I mean, every so often, every maybe four or five months, we do the Harvest Festival, Um collect a crop and we have a big party and uh, Georgia's got some uh, alcohol and she supplies the town except for Father Turner of course Um, and then we all just have a a wonderful time and enjoy the night and you know wake up and uh, go on our merry way I suppose and it's a yearly event? Every four four months or so usually Father Turner will tell us when it's time for the next one Okay, I feel He's got bad. a sense for these things. Sense for these things. I feel bad mm. with us having like you know free stay in the hotel, etc. Is there anything we can do to help with the harvest festival? Um, I mean, if you want to help, I've got a lot of like crops to move and stuff. Oh yeah, and I she kind of crops. shows you about um about a five minute walk from really not far, about a five minute walk from the town. There's like a little stead uh, that has like some farmable land. Surprisingly, a lot of this place is very dusty, but there's just a patch of farmable land there where she's growing stuff. Um, not a huge farm, obviously, but enough to feed the town with a little bit of excess. And she's kind of directing you to harvest crops and stuff. Do you want to roll a brawn check for me to see how well you do? Yep. 
Like uh, brawn minus two. Mm-hmm. Um, minus two. Okay. I mean, you're not a ton of help, let's say, but <laughs> but you're you're eager, and that that counts for a lot. Enthusiastic um, but useless. Is, yeah. Is the and line. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Jewel thanks you a lot, and and getting close to her, she can't, as you guys near the end of your preparations, she comes over and she's got she's got a pair of uh, like cufflinks, little cufflinks, um, like wrist cuff things uh, that would that would tie together a, a, a dress shirt. She says, um, "Jana, I wanted you to have these. I think in exchange for all your help during these this time, it's been a really hard time, but I think these were my husband's, and I think he would." He would want you to have them for helping out. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm just doing my part. I don't. I really don't want to take your husband's cufflinks. I feel like you should keep those. No, I have a lot of stuff to remember him by. He he used to help me with the farm, but um, th- he would wear these on ha- the harvest festival, and I know he would hate it that they're not going to, you know, be there. I, I I want. I think he would want. I think it's right. I think he would want th- you to have these. Okay, well, thank you so much. Is there a um, clothier where I could buy a dress shirt? Oh, Charity Charity uh, is a seamstress. She she can help sort you out, I'm sure. Okay, oh, I'll talk to her. Oh, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this harvest. Me too, she says. Um, now let's jump to Jackson, who has been recovering, staying in the church uh, for the first night, and then you were well enough to kind of get walked over to the inn where you've been staying since then. Um, but and the first night in the church... You were asleep and you woke up and you saw uh, Father Turner was pacing. This was the night after uh, Lily spoke to him about potentially um, welcoming Baxter into the town or at least forgiveness. And he's clearly there's something on his mind. And he notices you're awake and and comes over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Roos. I'm sorry I woke you up. Please get back to sleep. Oh, is is there something on your mind? I mean, with all the stuff going on and... Baxter's been here since we got here and I'm just I'm stressed out I, I think it's not I, I appreciate what Lily said but I think it's not the right time for us to you know we've got the harvest festival coming up I think it's not right I, I don't know maybe we're being tested um I, I have to admit I'm not too familiar with the uh the teachings of, of uh your old mate Zed Kiel uh but I mean what is what does he say uh in terms of you know, accepting others and, you know, that religious whatnot stuff. Uh, I mean, on one hand, he preaches uh, preaches and teaches of equality and compassion for your fellow man, but he also teaches of justice. And honestly, Baxter is not necessarily our fellow man, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't burden you with this. And especially because... With the Harvest Festival just a few days away, I suspect it's not even going to matter in a few days, right? Like, I'm, I think I'm just overthinking it. What I mean, what, so what do we do at this Harvest Festival? Is this just like a... I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. We, dr- it's, we drink, we marry. Uh, did Eb mention anything? Uh, I mean, did she? No. <laughs> I think there probably wasn't time as well um, since, since yeah. all the action. Uh, look, I, okay, you guys, I guess, can trust you guys with this we probably won't see you around after the harvest festival um nobody else knows this because usually they're all just drinking and being merry but i've noticed uh, since i don't drink i've noticed things are different or about the town sometimes after the harvest festival i mean okay uh what sort of things it's just things change i mean i the others don't seem to get it but we used to have more townsfolk, right? But they, if they die, we bury them in the graveyard, the graveside out back, but there's only two graves, right? So therefore, there couldn't have been more townsfolk, but there were, I'm sure there were, I have records. And like, but the, the when, when we, I think, for example, after the next Harvest Festival, I don't think the graves that are there now are going to be there. I think they're going to be gone and soon we'll forget who those people were. Okay, I mean, this is, this is really in uh, a conversation you should be have, having with Ab. Um, what about, I mean, you've with, with Baxter, like, you know, he's only been around for a few months. I assume that's since the last Harvest Festival. Yeah, maybe two weeks after he first showed up. Well, I mean, you know, so I think maybe maybe this is some sort of test. And you got to ask yourself, what would 
what would ZKL? Why would he do this? What what is the point? And um, uh, also, sorry, what uh, can I turn my side on for a sec? What's the cloud doing on his head as he's talking about like the fact that um, you know, they 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 seem to be teleporting and there's only two graves and <laughs> such. It's not. It's actually not responding that much. Okay. I I appreciate that, Bruce. I'll take that to heart. Um, look, you should rest. You should rest. Rest up. Um, and he get, he convinces you to go back to sleep, and then you see him close the door to your little room, but you hear him pacing still on the other side. Um, um, sorry, so how, how long to the Harvest Festival again? So it A was few days? Uh, three days, but we're going to fast forward through town through time as, uh, you know, you're resting up and um, uh, Lily is writing her sermon and Roman is helping out prepare. Uh, and so we're going to fast forward all the way to the day of the Harvest Festival. Um, you're now back in the inn. Uh, I mean, is there anything else anyone wants to do before it, the Harvest Festival? I think let's, uh, it, everything will come to a natural head then anyway. So. <laughs> I mean, I guess... Uh... I do feel like Jackson is going to make the case that they need to get the fuck out of town before the Harvest Festival, because um, if this town teleports somewhere else and we get separated from our ship, uh, that's a problem. Um, yeah, I guess you guys ha- over the next few days have the chance to like share information and put your heads together. If you want to do any kind of brainstorming about what's going on in the town, feel free to take this time to do so. Oh, right. Um, well, uh, Kippos is pretty sure that uh, Baxter is just an other that was living on this asteroid um, and that the uh, the town is essentially like kind of like the collective idea of like a Western town. So it's some kind of like otherized space um, and they're just like basically asteroid hopping away from the unknown every couple of months. Um, hence they forget their previous people that they buried there. And hence the town resets. So, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I, well, I mean, it sounds like the Harvest Festival is some sort of yeah. ritual um, that, you know, jumps, whether it's the asteroid or the town or whatever. Um, so disrupting the Harvest Festival could Kill them all. potentially uh, end well, whatever I mean, spell's seemed, going on I'm, here. I'm guessing that there are others, that they're all others as part of this um, thing. Like, and yeah, so... Baxter was just kind of like a random different other that because now of his proximity to the town has been drawn into it, um, drawn into the ritual, essentially. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And do we want to disrupt the ritual? I feel like that'll just kill them. <laughs> yeah, so probably not, right? Wow. Yeah, I suppose. Um, you guys have been discussing this over the course of the few days and you're still kind of unsure about what exactly you should do. And the Harvest Festival is rapidly approaching. It's the morning of the Harvest Festival. Uh, it'll kick off in probably a few hours. You guys are still, you guys have all kind of funneled into the same room to, to discuss what you should do, try and figure it out. And as you're partway through your conversation, you hear uh, just once the bell on the church ring. No concern. Let's, let's go out. Yeah, let's go check that out. Um You guys head out, as do all the town members, and coming from the direction, not the direction of Baxter's camp, but the direction, the other direction, towards where your ship is, um, you see a man riding on a horse, uh, pulling behind him a donkey, which is loaded up with a bunch of bags, satchels and stuff, and you can see kind of uh, some food in there, there's leather piled over it, all kinds of things, and you see all the townsfolk kind of run up and and say hi as, as this person wanders into town on his horse. Oh, this must be the trader. Zachariah. Yeah, this would be uh, Zach. Are you guys going to go over and meet with the townsfolk? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, cool. So you guys head over and, um, and and Father Turner points to you guys as he's talking to, to Zachariah and you hear him say, now these are, the, these, these are the folks that I was telling you about, Zach. The, the, uh, sorry, Zachariah. Uh, these are, the, these are the, the travelers who are passing through. And you see Zachariah kind of look over to you and nod. Howdy, uh, travelers. He says, what brings you to Clearwater? Sight, sight check. I want to do a sight check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yeah. No, last Roman? time I used my sight, I ended up throwing up because of all the uh, gross stuff in that. <laughs> Fair enough. He's, Roman's a bit averse to using his sight. Um, let's just make a guts check. Uh, oh. Both of you. 
uh, Lily and Jackson. That's concerning. Uh, two. Let's hope for not another minus four. Eh, one. Okay, uh, you guys both turn on your sight and immediately are overwhelmed by a blindingly bright light. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Jackson, you're going to take two points of mental stress, and Lily, you're <laughs> going to take three points of mental stress. How? As you quickly shut off your sight again. <laughs> Zachariah smiles. As you guys kind of reel from this, Zachariah just slightly smiles towards you. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, I'm just, uh, how, how like, shook are we? Should we uh, still chat to him, or? No, you, it part, as you turn off your sight and reel a bit, and, and one or two towns folk around you kind of steady you with a hand, uh, and, and uh, Zachariah says to you, are you, are you too okay? Hopefully you're not unwell. And, and then notices the bullet, the bandaged up <laughs> bullet wound on you, Jackson says, maybe you should lie down. And, and Dr. Fletcher says, yes, I, Bruce, maybe it's best if you continue to rest if you're feeling a bit lightheaded. Jackson's just gonna like respond to Zachariah, and like just he's just sort of staring Zachariah in the eyes as he sort of says, "Oh, you know, like it should be, it should be fine. Like the, the you know, the wisdom and power of Zedkiel might get me through it, right?" And Zachariah l- narrows his eyes at you and looks to Father Turner and says. Speaking of, Father, I've got a new book for you. I found a, a, a one town over. They had another tome, and I thought you might like it. Free of charge. And Father Turner says, thank you, Zachariah. Thank you. And takes this book from him. Uh, clearly some kind of religious book. So, uh, Zachariah, what's, uh, what's your relationship with Zedkiel then, huh? No, no formal relationship, I suppose. Just trying to do my best by him like everyone. Sure. Okay. <sighs> Fucking, this is... Can I, while this is happening, can I be like checking out his wares? Is there anything out of the ordinary in the stuff he's brought to trade? <laughs> no, nothing crazy. I mean, there's uh, there's like leathers and supplies and stuff and, and everyone's kind of doing the same as you, like checking out what he's got to offer and, and kind of offering up their own wares in exchange. And, and in between conversations, Zacharias, you know, he, he reaches over to charity, the seamstress who's offered him a nice linen shirt. And he says, perfect here. And I've got some new flat, uh, some new cotton for you to, to, to use. And I found some nice buttons here. And he trades the shirt for, for some stuff and like puts it away. And he's kind of stocking them up. He, he passes some milk to Georgia, who, uh, the, who uh, worked behind the bar. And she gives him like a little wooden uh, duck that she has kind of whittled for him. And they exchange that. And he's just kind of exchanging stuff with the townsfolk. I should point out, because the question came up before, this person does not look like the person that you met, uh, <laughs> Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Harlan, the blacksmith, who has, hasn't spoken much, is a, seemingly a relatively quiet person, but uh, he he uh, speaks up and says, Now, Zachariah, are you planning to stay for the Harvest Festival this year? I've been trying, I mean, this uh, this season, I've been trying for a while, you know, to get you. And Zachariah shakes his head, No, no, I, I can't. I'm afraid I have to get on to the next town. So sucks. Mm. So you guys just continue to look through the wares and he continues to trade with folks. Anything else you guys want to speak to him about? He's starting to kind of pack up. The The day gets a little bit later. Still not time for the Harvest Festival yet, but he's starting to pack up and, and prepare to ride his horse out of town. Well, Zachary, could, could we speak with you just in, uh, in private for a few minutes? Sure, sure, of course. And he uh, kind of shepherds you guys away off behind a building uh, and he turns to you and says, So, what can I help you with? What is your relation with, with these folks, Zachariah? I don't think that is any of your concern. Oh, that was overtly aggressive. <laughs> he, his gentle demeanor slipped away as soon as you rounded the corner behind a building wow. where nobody could see you. Oh, sorry. I actually, I took a bullet, like, defending these folks. Um, it was from them, too, but it, that's a whole... <laughs> it's a, it was a whole... Look, I think... We're trying to help here, all right? So either you're trying to help here or, you know, let's not go the other direction, okay? Clearly, I am trying to help here. Look, look at the town. Can you imagine how difficult it would be for a town like this to survive without access to goods like the ones I supply at a very reasonable price? I think we can both agree we've been acting in the best interests of the town. Do they need your goods? Well, you know, a, a seamstress needs cotton to turn into shirts. They need leathers to turn into shoes. Is that right? They do they need your goods? Living where they live? Yes. And uh, how, did you, how did you find this place? I don't, again, I don't believe that's 
your business. Zachary, I have no intention of attempting to stop you helping these people, as you say. To me, it seems like a solid uh, connection for them with uh, the outside. However, he slowly nods as you're saying this. I would encourage you to help them accept a new member into their group. Oh, and what new member would this be? That would be the one known as Baxter. And he kind of laughs, but without smiling. Baxter, okay. I don't think they're on board with that idea. Baxter was simply drawn into this, whatever it is, Mm. as much as any of them are bound by it. Baxter seems to be bound by it. It is clear that you hold great sway over these people. I'm sure within a few weeks or months, they will have uh, forgotten, shall we say, the uh, harms that Baxter caused. He nods at you. Okay. And he smiles, and you see the smile reach his eyes, and he says, I'll see what I can do. After all, a civilization must grow to continue. Right. Right. And he kind of walks back over to the town and uh, finishes saddling up um, and exchanges a few more items and starts to ride off out of town uh, before stopping and looking back at you guys and going over and uh, speaking a few words with Father Turner and Harlan. Uh, cool. Uh, mission accomplished. Should we go back to the ship? Yeah. Uh, let's just... I really wish to speak with Father Turner one last time before we leave. Um, Zach, uh, Zachariah gets back on his horse and heads out and Father Turner heads over to you and says, uh, with Harlan in tow and says, Okay, Ab, um, we've been thinking it over, and I think you're right. I think I think we should practice forgiveness. I'm so glad you see it that way, Father. Uh, I wrote this sermon <laughs> for you. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take a look at it, and he kind of takes it and and gives it a brief look before putting it in his uh, in his uh, pocket, um, and he says. I have one last request before y- y'all leave, which is, I know you you uh, spoke with Baxter. Can you invite him to the Harvest Festival tonight? I will. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Do you do you swear to do him no harm if he does you no harm? Oh, um, yeah. And he looks at Harlan, and and they both nod. If he doesn't harm us, we won't harm him. Yeah. I am so proud of you. And he goes off to continue talking with Harlan. Um, and preparing for the festivities. The Harvest Festival is rapidly approaching, so you guys get the sense that if you want to leave, you've got to finish up this errand quickly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Lily is going to start making her way towards where Baxter's camp is. Do the the other two of you go with, with her? Can I? Yeah, I think so. Is it possible for me to go get the ship so I can, like, scoop them up? Yeah, sure. I think I'm going to do that So you, I'm uh, wary of time. Mm-hmm. Roman heads back to get the ship while Jackson and Lily go and speak to Baxter. You find him, he's he's still in the exact same camp he was when you uh, saw him last, Lily, which is basically just in a direction and walk for... There's, like, no path to get there. You just walk in a straight line. That's how you followed him. It made it very easy for you to get back to town <laughs> while still remembering where he was. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's going to ask her to sit again. Um, can I get you to roll wits for me? Same for you, Jackson. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Jackson's just also going to open by uh, apologizing for the whole coming at him with a bloom and saber. <laughs> As he sees you, he again holds his hand over his gun, but then sees you don't seem to mean any harm. And, and Got my arms up. Comes out. Yeah. Amen. Misunderstanding. Water under the bridge. I don't know if you've seen bridges before, but yeah. <laughs> um, can I get wits checks from both of you? So it's a zero. Wits, man. I am so glad I specced into wits. That's a five. Wow. Okay, um, Lily, you go and sit down with uh, Baxter. Jackson, you have the sense that you're be- that you guys are being watched. Um, let's go to you first, Lily. Okay, so she's gonna like look over at um, Baxter and and just like start talking and just say, um, Baxter, I've spoken to the townsfolk um, and to their connection, uh, Trader Zachariah. Now I was told by by the father, Father Turner, that they would uh, like you to come to the Harvest Festival tonight. And they told me that they would do you no harm un- unless you tried to harm them first. And uh, Baxter nods at you. 
you can join them, become one with the town. Back to nods again. I would hope that you would leave your your gun here as a sign of peace. He takes his gun and he passes it to you. Oh, shit. Free gun. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I've got an empty can of beans. I've got a gun. <laughs> sort of. You're really kidding up. Living the life. Um, hey, uh, Baxi, uh, you wouldn't happen to know anything about Zachariah, would you? Does that name mean anything to you? He tilts his head at you and kind of slowly nods and then kind of pauses and nods. Uh, Lily, how do we communicate with this guy? I don't think I can do yes or no mm-hmm. questions. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. Shit, okay. Uh, I was hoping to avoid that charge. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so, Baxter, if you sp- do whatever language you, you can do, uh, I'll, I'll understand you. Baxter reaches his hand down into the sand and kind of brushes his fingers across the the sand and as he does this his fingers kind of move fairly rapidly it's not like fingers they're more like pistons that go in and out i guess but the there is basically an impression left in the sand of some strange script uh in the sand after he has run his hand across it with his digits pumping in and out and jackson uh, jackson you look at it and can interpret words he's he's writing in a language to you um he has written hello uh, hey, uh, hi. And he looks at you and nods. Um, so, Zachariah, like, what, what, what do you know about him, I guess? Um, and please, write as efficiently as possible this translation, like, I, I don't want to owe a debt to Marl and Dick. Uh, he brushes out the message that he left there, and then runs his hands across the dirt again for a longer period of time this time. And, uh, left in the impression of the sand is... Uh, something that you realize translates uh, Marlon whispers into your ear. He says, First day here, Z plus G. So plus G? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, I, I mean, obviously I'm relaying all of it. Um, and Baxter nods after you've said this. Uh, okay, so Z, Z Kiel and plus, Baxter nods. Plus what? What? G? Father Turner? Baxter shakes his head. Hmm. Uh, like God, like um, Baxter rubs out the dirt and punches in uh, into the dirt uh, the word "gray." Uh, man, why? Like, just uh, speaking as Elliot, I, I'm not, I'm not getting it. <laughs> so, like, gray said, Kiel, what is that? Um, so the fog. L- let's roll a knowledge check, shall we? For both of you two, All right. it won't be too difficult. Let's call it a two. Okay, which is something I'm good at. So I got a three as well. Um, and what did you get? Sorry, Jackson? A, a three. Oh, both got threes. Okay, cool. Um, gray is an, I mean, assuming that he's talking about the gray that you are thinking of, a very famous name. Uh, a Someone who founded a number of years ago a technology corporation that now supplies all of Outreach with a huge amount of its technology. Oh. Um, E.g. the Grey Link, e.g. a lot of different kinds of things. In fact, you're wearing, oh, right. you're both wearing Grey Link devices on your hands, right? Zachariah and Grey came to see you. And back, Baxter kind of tilts his head and then shakes nope. it. Said Zed Kiel and, and Grey. Uh, and then kind of uh, points at you and nods. So, okay, so Zachariah. And then he nods is... again is working for ZKL and Gray. He kind of shakes his head, but then nods his head. He is ZKL working for Gray? Okay, I knew that fucker would yell. Okay. <laughs> so what the fuck was does Gray want with some hillbillies on an asteroid? Bax just looks at you blankly. Yeah, sorry, that was like a, you know, just like a question to the room. <laughs> yep. um, uh, why, why did they come to see you? Um, Baxter shakes his head and uh, points at where he had written in the ground before, where he had written first day, and kind of underlines first with oh, his fingers. They left you here. He he doesn't respond to that. You kind of get the sense that he's not really sure how to respond. They made you? Again, he kind of slowly nods, but then sh- he again stops and just kind of 
doesn't respond. He, you get the sense he's not really sure. He's not really sure the answer to that question. I, sorry if this is insensitive, but were you something else before you were a cowboy robot? He, uh, he, before where he had written, the first thing he wrote that you interpreted was the word hello with a question mark. He had ra- erased most of it, but the question mark at the end remained. And he now points, he circles oh, Is he a cubby? So, yeah, I don't think he knows what he was before yeah. or if he was something before. Ah, oh, Jesus. I don't, I'm not even sure where to. <laughs> okay. So how do you, how do you know about Zed Kiel and Gray? Uh, he, he just points to first day Zed plus I G. mean, look, like, I know I said not to be too verbose before, <laughs> but like, you know, like you don't have to, you don't have to dumb it, like dense it down this much, you know? Um, he goes to an un- unwritten patch of dirt and he kind of pauses for a second. He points to the first day again. And then he goes and, and he goes to write. This writing process is quite time consuming. That's why he's also being quite verbose. Um, he writes, sorry, not the opposite of verbose, <laughs> su- succinct. Um, what would he write? Shit. He kind of just points to the first day again and says, he writes down uh, and his fingers kind of punch into the sand. And uh, he's written the word introduction. So I'm assuming where else is all happening. I've started off the ship. <laughs> uh, you- yes. Could I send them a message that's like running out of time? Question mark onto their <laughs> yeah, grey You guys get that message on your grey link. Beep boop. Um, I mean, do you want to come with us, Baxter, or do you want to stay with the town? He points at the town. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um. Okay. Well. Uh. We we actually have to get going because we don't want to get into whatever this is. But you know, like, good for you. Um. Is there anything else you want to tell us? Uh. Otherwise, we might skedaddle um he stands up and shakes both of your hands and then starts clunking off towards the town okay uh maybe uh maybe we'll see you uh another time good luck he nods um all right so baxter heads off to the town uh uh roman uh, roman is kind of pulling the ship over um i think jackson you had the sensation before of being watched that has more or less completely faded by now, but you kind of look over to around and just briefly you see a bright flash of light off behind a dune somewhere as Roman comes in to land the ship. Um, okay, I guess I point out where it was and ask Roman to fly over there on our way out. You guys fly over there and you see uh, behind a, a rock, a kind of large rocky outcrop, there's just a kind of like scorch marks uh where where this bright flash would have been but there's not really anything else looking at the scorch marks you can see they're shaped um in the shape of wings i guess uh but there's not much else here there's in fact there's nothing else here no it's okay i've, I've watched i've watched enough super <laughs> what that means okay, good. yeah i thought you would get that reference <laughs> <laughs> i mean even before that it was a bit <laughs> okay all right well it's just scorched sand then fine we don't have to have an obvious clue all right if you guys are getting it already that's fine um yeah lily is gonna like act it like look up like zedkiel um specifically um, around like religious stuff okay uh looking up zedkiel you find yeah i think okay well let's make a knowledge check i think this is going to be a it's not super common information, so we'll make a knowledge check, but obviously this is something that you are relatively oh, good at, bitch. so I think you Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, it's a plus one. I'll, I'll remind you, you can, if you'd like, you can invoke Athena to uh, pull more knowledge. Yeah. Um, like, I suppose because she, she'll, like, start looking around and not really find anything yeah. as much. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, she'll she'll invoke Athena to uh, assist with this. Um, Zedkiel is... Uh, despite Catholicism not being a major religion anymore, there are still some surviving information. It's just hard to find. So you don't find it initially. You don't really find anything initially other than Zed Kiel is a, a name. Um, but looking deeper into it and and kind of communing with Athena a bit more, you find your way onto places that reference Zed Kiel as the name of an angel in the Bible. Uh, obviously, your knowledge of angels is that they aren't necessarily one-to-one matching this old school religious iconography, but definitely 
uh, an angel. Um, I guess the other thing you find is just kind of general knowledge on angels in general. Um, with the decline of of a lot of major religions for for especially the non uh, the non initiated, the non awakened, you know, um, angels as a type of other are, are way less common and way less powerful than they used to be, just mm-hmm. purely because there is no uh, devotion to them or servitude to them. I think that's so. You find some general information on angels and their decline, and you find uh, Zed Kill was, was the name of an angel uh, biblically. Okay. Um, that takes a bit of time, and you guys are kind of watching as Lily is researching and she's kind of explaining stuff to you as she finds it. And uh, in the time that, in the few hours that pass, you you kind of, you guys are just kind of hovering near this uh, place, near this planet. Um, are you going to check in on how the Harvest Festival goes? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we'll watch it from space. Watch it from space? Yeah. Okay. So from far up, far up in space, you see, uh, it's very hard to tell what's actually going on, but you guys see, as Lily is off researching, uh, Baxter walks up to the town. Uh, nobody moves for a bit, but then seemingly has been invited in. Uh, and you see people enjoying themselves. Baxter mushing food into his face, uh, everyone else drinking and eating, um, until the sun is starting to set. Uh, and you see uh, part of the Harvest Festival has been a, an arch that has been constructed. Um, uh, you see everyone drinking, having a good time, and they all kind of start to party themselves <laughs> into a... a, a, a late into the night and people start kind of falling asleep and, and just kind of laying in the street and stuff um, with this uh, drunken revelry uh, except for Baxter and uh, Father Turner who neither of which are able to one can't become drunk and one won't let's say um, <laughs> so as everyone else kind of winds down and starts to fall asleep you see them kind of standing in the middle of the street kind of looking at this arch and, and uh, kind of looking at each other um, and then there's a bright light and by the time the light has cleared, you see nobody is left. Father Turner and Baxter are there. People who were in the street, Isaac, who was drinking a lot and collapsed in the street, has gone. Um, everything else is still there, though, but the people have gone. All right. Okay, so now we're, like, what, four days behind schedule? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still only three. Oh, no, it's like three and a half. Shit. Um... And I guess that's... Do we have any final <laughs> things we want to do before we wrap up today's session? Uh, yeah, Lily's going to send that as a report. <laughs> Roman? I was just going to say empty can of beans, gun, cufflinks. Well, yeah. I think overall <laughs> net positive is what I say to Jackson when he's obviously upset. Is our loot still with us? Is who still is who's still with our us? Our loot. Yes, yes. Hell yes. yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, Jackson wouldn't mind getting the chance to look at that gun for a bit. If, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. If if Lily's willing to, you can look at the, the empty it. can of beans too, if you'd like. Uh, the gun has uh, one bullet left in it. Oh Jesus! Oh, God, I'm just concerned. It's fine. <laughs> Anything else before we wrap up the session? Just a fun fact: Baxter was named. Baxter McClunky, but that just never came up. I thought I'd just share that. I love it. Um, all right. <laughs> you're <laughs> like, seemed... <laughs> easily my favorite bit of this episode was when you're like, here are the townspeople, and they all introduce themselves and give them give you their names. And I'm like, okay, Ruben, we get it. You go for more backstories. I got <laughs> Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, we really didn't interact with Harlan much or Godfred or Charity, but, you know, they're there. Um, it's fine. Sorry, I was too busy getting fucking shot by them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 